We're talking waivers on today's episode of the show. Some very important names, especially at the running back position, that you need to fight and scrap and claw to get onto your roster so you can make the fantasy playoffs and go on a run. Like today's video, leave a comment, let us know how you did this past week as you try to hang on to that spot. Enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Andy, Jason, Mike. What? Andy, Jason, Mike. What What happened there? Oh, sounded good to me. Clock going backwards, Mike. Oh, I don't even, I don't even know if I could do this show. What happened there? Bizarro land. You missed a couple days last week, and uh, I guess. the changed. order of things has changed. But I'm still first. Well, that was the key. I get, right? You get to I get say it. the words. Yeah. Alphabetical. So, yeah, real order. Deion Sanders situation over there. <laughs> Do you like Deion? I am I I think he's can be charming as a as a television personality. I don't know if it'll work as a coach. I think I like Deion. Like uh, I, the back when they had uh primetime on NFL Network like every week and he would highlight a few guys it was always it was always fun. He is very charismatic, yes. and I think that'll uh, and think super it, famous right. as a football player. Which for college kids, that's going to matter. This new paid world of college players, I think that nil. Yeah, I think that that's going to um, that's going to be good for the Deion Sanders type coaches. Yeah, and it's going to keep players in college if you can write them a big check to come back. Like I awesome. don't know, no, no. Bijan, you <laughs> you declare for the draft immediately. Oh my goodness! After all the drama of this last week, if Bijan Robinson goes back to college, I will spend at least one night crying. Yes, uh, in this week's edition of the Truman Show, my uh, Jason has <laughs> the number one pick by a point. This last week, the matchup determined that Jason would he he his team isn't bad. He just has the pick of a bad team. And now, and he's been pining for Bijan all mm -hmm. year long. And his trade was on the basis that he'd have a shot to draft him. In my mind, I was trading Chris Godwin, a good dynasty asset, for Bijan. It wasn't for the one. It wasn't like, for the one. It yeah. was for Bijan Robinson next year. So he needs to be in the NFL for me to draft him. It's exciting for you, though. You get it, to, you it, you have the pick. And I it, he should he, come out and play. Do you think would we allow him to just still draft Bijan, oh, even if he if he went back to college, like a one year, yeah, uh, like a red just, shirt, just like a little uh, byline in the the dynasty rules. There, be like, sure, you can go ahead and draft him if you want. There haven't been a lot of prospective like top fifteen type of picks that have gone back. I mean, I remember Leinert doing it. Where he would have been the number one overall pick, and then ends up. Whoops! <laughs> Mistakes yeah. were made. But uh, it is a different world now, where players will get it'll get thinned out a little bit in terms of who's coming out. But I'm not ready to turn the page yet to uh, college prospects. No. We have fantasy playoffs at hand today. We've got the waiver show. There are some names to talk about today. At all of the positions, we'll have our quarterback streamers. Maybe even more relevant this week because I think there are some really good options and there are some injuries at the quarterback position. In particular, those of you that will be without Lamar Jackson this upcoming week. And there Jimmy are Garoppolo. six bye weeks, including Justin Fields. So uh, at every position, this is the week leading into the playoffs, six teams on bye. This, gentlemen, this might be the most important show we've done this year. And, uh, you know, people following along with the tweets last night. Of course, Mike Evans did not get it done. 
7.9 when I needed 9, or less than 9, really. Dude. I yeah, needed you, like point four eight more points. Yeah, it was anything. If he caught a screen pass for no yards, you win. And well, he had two drives at the end of the game in pure passing situations where that was true, and he did not get it done. Boy, which he was, also He was a little tired there. <laughs> he had to come out the field. Yeah, pass interference on a bomb that was going yeah. to him yeah, in the he, end zone. That he was definitely catching. Definitely, it if the defender hadn't pulled his arm down. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Brooks holds on to the bye. Congratulations, so far. Brooksy. Yeah, yeah. You, you think it's that like locked in because our whole no, division I mean, has you, the same record. Right? You got to win. Yeah, you yeah, you I control your own destiny now. If I had point four eight more points, Brooks, I would have controlled my own destiny. But. Uh, not to be. Monday nights are made for paint. Yeah, also, are the Buccaneers bad? Yes. No, no, no. Yes. They won. They're really, <laughs> I, really I, good. I, I, I realize they put up 14 points in the fourth quarter after uh, having three points the entirety of the game, but I I think they might be bad. They, I think that's because you watched the game. So <laughs> the Buccaneers are not a good team. I mean, obviously, this isn't a very good division. You're talking about a 500 team leading the way two of their recent victories were barely 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 stolen w's from a game where they were putrid and down the whole game i mean three minutes to go in this in this matchup last night it was almost unfathomable that the tampa bay buccaneers could win the game it took a complete boneheaded decision uh by mark ingram which he apologized for to even allow the what was to come back in the game? No, when he ran out of bounds on an easy first down, and then they didn't because get the third he was and... hurt. Like he should not have been back in the game. Well, I mean, it, he was also he, he ran he out. Ha, he, all he had to do was run out of bounds a yard further, right? Or uh, that's why he apologized. Reached the ball out, right? But I'm saying like there was uh, no one near him. <laughs> yeah, but to me, the way I looked at the, I saw that play was why is Mark Ingram back in the game after being down, grabbing his knee, and then you gave him the ball, and then he. When he, after when he was out of bounds, he was grabbing his leg again. Like that was just it was a weird decision by the team to put Ingram back in that position. Alvin Kamara was twelve for twenty six in this game. Two point two yards per carry. Woof. Two yes. catches. Woof. You know, there were people going into this game needing Kamara and Olave to combine for points or Chris Godwin and Kamara, and Kamara has not been he's not been it. But he did not get ten fantasy no, points. No, he did not. No, terrible. I mean, Ingram outrushed him in terms of total yardage on fewer carries. Taysom Hill caught a touchdown pass. He did. He also dropped the game-winning, a game-winning catch. Not, oh come uh, on! I, mean, <laughs> I, that I, I is forgive you because ridiculous. it's on brand. It is on brand, and I get it. If it was Deontay, was it in his hands? If it was Deontay Johnson, I would say the same thing. However, Foot Clan, if you are listening and did not see the game, he he caught a difficult catch. It was uh, in his hands, right? Yeah, secure okay, it. Okay, it was in his hands, and, and then it was on the ground. And then a defender came I'm up just with saying, a to the brutal, definition, brutal hit on the ball, totally legal, knocked it out. and uh, the, that, but, but when a ball hits you in the hands and then it is on the ground afterwards, that is called an incomplete pass. A drop. No. Concussion is the word you're looking for. Yeah. He didn't get hit. He got hit in the ball. I don't think he got hit in the head, did he? Oh, he got hit. No. In the head. Yeah, he he got sho mostly oh, shoulder. Yeah, I, think it, I think I think he went right. I think in the it was ball. a perfectly legal hit, right, like right in the chest. Yeah, yeah. We'd have to I'll relook at it, but it looked like he got hit in the chest and then dropped the ball. But regardless, for fantasy purposes, <laughs> the the Buccaneers look really really bad. Mike Evans hasn't been good in over a month now. Obviously, there was the pass interference call that would have changed the yeah, entire game, and maybe you can have those small mental victories. But Chris Godwin also had a touchdown call back. Um, the, the reality is Tom Brady, when there's any pressure on him, is doing what Matt Ryan's been doing, which is just going, oh, i got to get rid of the ball. It's the shortest <laughs> route possible. And, and they're not protecting him very well. That's the issue is that his offensive line isn't what it was a couple of years ago. They've had injuries and retirements, and Brady is not going to be able to do the same things that he's done in the past unless they protect him. And to my knowledge, they're not gaining any new offensive linemen. What do you do with the running backs in Tampa Bay moving forward in terms of determining start sit? I mean, Rashad White had six catches in this game. So did Leonard Fournette. Man. White got into the end zone. 
Fournette ran for more yards. I mean, it is a full time split. Yeah, it it really looked like Rashad White was taking over, and then he had a pretty bad fumble, uh, if I'm remembering that mm -hmm. correctly. And uh, and then Fournette went was very much the, the next man up. They went back to Rashad White. Obviously, he caught the touchdown at the end, but it seems like it will be the timeshare. But I prior I think to the, I lean Rashad White. Yeah, prior to the fumble. Uh, Fournette was was very involved. This looked like a like a a pretty even split, and I think that's what you have to look at. You could start either one of these guys, but you're going to be splitting the workload. So, yeah. for instance, next week I believe they play the San Francisco 49ers. Ew! I don't want a split workload against that defense with this offense. I'll probably bench both of these guys. But if they were playing the Chargers or a run defense that is, you know, really uh, porous, then I would probably play both. You didn't want to play Jeff Wilson or Raheem Mostert against the 49ers, and so I think you're right on the money with this one. Let's um, let's turn the page. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. John Harbaugh called Lamar Jackson week to week with his knee injury, stating he's less likely to play in week 14. They uh, 14 they signed Brett Hundley to the practice squad. So we'll miss him for at least a week. More than likely, yeah. Kenneth Walker, small strain in his ankle. Injury is unusual. That's a quote. Also, all of and this, this is important because he's obviously a key running back that looks like he might not play this week. This is the waiver wire show. So you're like, okay, who's the next man up? They're all gone. I mean, the <laughs> Seattle – Running backs, Travis Homer is dealing with a knee sprain. DJ Dallas picked up basically a high ankle sprain and then did the thing where you play through it a little bit because he had, had to. to. Um, I, I expect them to sign someone, and I don't think it is unreasonable to think that Kenneth Walker might be back this week. They haven't ruled him out this week. Uh, he would be less than 100%, but I have no idea who is going to be allowed to play running back for – I mean, maybe it's Tony Tony – James it might be. Jones, Brooks Robinson. I don't remember his name. <laughs> you think you added one in there? I'm not <laughs> yeah. sure it's Brooks Robinson. No, you I added a baseball so. one in there, Jason. Yeah, yeah, for you, Brooks. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you can throw in up to three different names in the middle of that name if you want. Your favorite. What three is his name? <laughs> Genuine. Tony James. Nope, no, there's no Tony, James in it. There's no James? <laughs> no. <laughs> Tony Brooks? Tony Brooks. <laughs> Tony Brooks Jr., right? That's the actual human being's name. <laughs> I could not you, remember. Uh, it, no, it's Tony, it's Tony Jones, Jones Jr. Jr. Okay. Oh, there is a Jones. <laughs> Tony Jones. There's no, no Brooks? James. There's no James. There's Wait, no is there James. a Brooks? No Brooks. No. Okay, <laughs> so whatever. Yes, <laughs> yes, Kyle yes. is dying over there. <laughs> yesterday, Jason. What's his name, Kyle? Tony Jones. Tony Brooks, James Jones Jr. <laughs> yeah, thank oh, you. thank you. Jason was trying to find <laughs> him in our system on the fantasyfootballers.com yeah. to look at his profile. He could not find him. You do need to know the name could, for that. Yeah, I couldn't, yeah, couldn't I, remember his name. I, I typed a couple different things. I'm like, I can't find him. What is his name? We have we have changed his name so many times. Tony um, Jones Jr. Okay, thank you. Tony Jones Jr. There was, I think the reason is, is there's Tony Brooks James, the running back. Yes. And then there's Tony think, Jones. I think that's how it started once upon a time. Hmm. One of them might play running back this yeah. week. Uh, Hayden Hurst, doubtful to play for the Bengals moving forward uh, that or, seems or like, next week. It feels like an upgrade for Boyd at the least. He can drop more passes this week? Yeah. That was, oh, that was, that was so man. bad. One of the worst I don't know how of the you season. Can, I don't know how you can start Boyd. Well, there's there's With leagues. Any confidence. There are devil leagues out there where you, people will need to play him. Yes, there. Yes, there are. Mike. <laughs> Mike. We share a team with, that is one of them. Mike White will start against Buffalo. He will. But we did hear uh, from the Jets coaching staff the plan is for Zach Wilson to play at some point this what? year. One of the most ridiculous comments I've ever seen from a head coach. I need to go watch the video because if there, there's got to be more to it. There has to be because all I've seen is the headline that he expects him to play again this season. Is that, and that yeah, just I seems guess, like does that mean like you're expecting actually be the backup because he's been inactive? Yeah, uh, that's probably it. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully that's it. <laughs> because are you expecting Mike White to get injured? I mean, the fact that you said Mike White's going to start week 14, the reason that that is in our news section is because of this quote where he's saying, yeah, Zach Wilson's going to play again this year. The 
if Mike White goes out and throws three picks, get ready for some mayhem. Yeah. Because what he gives, you know, sometimes these coaches with a defense like that, the only way you feel like you're going to lose is with turnovers. I just – Mike White was a little off in this past game. So sure, he's got it right now. He should be the starter, but stranger things. Week injury, uh, week 13 injury recap article by Matthew Betts up on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. We'll be monitoring practice reports. There's going to be some waiver decisions to be made that you don't know what the outcome is really going to be yet, but that is the nature of Tuesday. Yeah, and one of those uh, one of those pickups could end up being the Raiders defense. They are they should be widely available because they're one of the worst defenses out there. But if John Wolfert, who is currently day to day, and that's a Thursday night game, so not a lot of recovery time, if he's out and uh, they have to go back to uh, Bryce Perkins. Perkins, then never go back to Perkins. Then I would be willing to fire up the Las Vegas Raiders defense. Certainly. I'd play him against Wolford. Wolford is not horrific, they're, and they they are horrific themselves. Yeah, that's why I would I would play like if it was no. I mean, like the Raiders are are a risky play. Sure, but they can at least rush the passer, and the Rams' offensive line is terrible. Like if it was Stafford, I would still be willing to stream the Raiders. Maybe I'm just a little bitter from thinking that again for Seattle's defense last week. That was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. A couple of things I failed to mention at the top. Trivia night on our uh, Fantasy oh, Footballers baby. Discord. Woo-hoo. So uh, the Foot Clan, if you head over there, if you want to support the show and become a Foot Clan member, that's jointhefoot.com. But then there's Trivia Night on Discord for the Foot Clan tonight at 8 we p.m. A, we have a Eastern. signed Footballers 10 that we're giving away to a yeah. winner. 10? Yeah, I like don't, a tin of cookies. I didn't know what to call those. I didn't either. We've got we. <laughs> that's why I, I just said call nothing. it a, a tin. A okay. tin. Sign? A tin is something you put something inside of. Yeah, it. I, really? that's true. Yeah, yes, that would be a, a sign. container. Yeah, a metal sign. On a metal Shopballers. sign. Com as metal sign. Okay, we've got a signed metal sign. Papa Josh. That sounds way better. Papa Josh says it's a tin tacker. That's another na- Yeah, that's okay. another name for it. A tin tacker because yeah. you because you tack it on the wall. Yeah, I mean, I think they're technically called tin tackers. Yeah, must be made out of tin. I just thought there were going to be Look, Christmas cookies in this tin, and I was getting real. Either, either way, like it's cool the way it is because we signed it, or if you need to melt it down, right? Because you need some tin smelter. There you, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, and then Jason, you got an announcement for the Megala Bowl. Yes, very very important for everybody in the Megala Bowl. Here are the two pieces of news you need to know. This is the final week before playoffs, and the playoff teams that make it into the playoffs are the top three seeds uh it will be records first your top three records if the third record is tied it will be a points tiebreaker top three teams from every single league go on to the playoffs also this is your last week of waivers because it's such a massive tournament and there you know there's uh, sometimes bad drops being made we lock waivers once playoffs start so you've got all this week is open waivers uh, or at least uh, daily recurring fab waivers the way it's been all year at the end of this week your roster that you finish this week's games with, that is set for all three weeks. Plan your backups, plan your matchups if you are playoff bound because they will be locked. Okay. That's it. Time to move on. Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. A reminder. Go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. There is a waiver wire rankings page if you want to review where we have players ranked. You know, it always comes down to what you need for your roster. Do you need to start this week? Are you looking for the highest upside overall heading into the fantasy playoffs? Six teams are on by this week. The Bears, Colts, Commanders, Falcons, Packers, and Saints. And it's time to dive into what wide receivers were welcoming into the fold this week. So uh, who's at the tippy top of your list? Well, I think for this week, you're probably looking for a start, m- more so than a stash. This is the final week to get in before the playoffs, a lot of bye weeks. So if I'm looking to start a player, there are two options that I like. My number one option that I like 
is someone that I think people will have a hard time starting because of what a disappointment and a trap game he just had. Oh, no, the spot starter? The spot starter, He's Zay back. Jones. He, he had a line of two catches for 16 yards this last week in a great matchup against Detroit. Obviously, a very huge disappointment. He had two bad drops in the game. One of those drops would have been a touchdown. He knows when to disappoint, but I think people are off of Zay Jones this week. <laughs> the pressure is off. It's still a good matchup against Tennessee where you can't run the ball, but you can throw the ball. He had seven targets. He is He's getting enough targets and is talented enough where – it, it was between him and Michael Gallup for me, as far as who I would want to throw into my lineup. Uh, Gallup's been really Interesting. involved. Interesting. You'd play Zay Jones over Michael Gallup? Well, the Houston matchup for the Cowboys, I just expect the Cowboys to, I mean, goodness gracious, like they'll probably be arrested um, <laughs> and not allowed to leave to Jacksonville the following week because of the manslaughter charges that will be brought on for what they're going to do to the Houston Texans. So I don't think they're going to have to throw the ball that much. Now, it could be Gallup with the touchdown, but we've seen this week after week after week, teams playing Houston, the passing game just is, is is nerfed. Yeah, I'm with you. I would start Zay Jones in that matchup over Michael Gallup. I'm not you know, chasing the two touchdowns. Gallup only had 23 receiving yards in that game, just got into the end zone twice. Uh, so I, I would probably play Zay Jones – if I didn't need to start somebody this week, I don't want Jahan Dodson to be ignored. Agreed. Coming off the injury, like he was a he was an important piece. Then he came back off the injury, was eased in snap wise, and now I think you know you just look at the end of the year. You're saying, well, do you want Jahan D J Jahan Dodson on your roster, or do you want you know to take a shot with one of these Sherfield Carter, Nico Collins? I. I think if you don't need somebody this week, he's somebody that should be rostered. Yeah, and, and obviously he's on bye, so you can't need him this week. But he is very, very talented. If you look Dodson. at... Dodson! We've got Dodson here! <laughs> there you go. What? It's been a, it's been a minute since, yeah. since that one. But We I, just repurposed the Dachson drop. Yeah. No, and, he says... he says I, I know, but I, I, I think I believe we, he says Jahan Dotson in that. <laughs> we uh, he, Jahan's really quiet. It's Jahan uh, Dotson whispers. Yeah. Okay. That's my understanding from gotcha. the classic Jurassic Park movie. Uh, I, for a, an actual spot start this week, uh, I would also throw out the name DJ Chark. He's mm -hmm. coming off a game, six targets, five for 98. So I think he had five targets the week before. He's back from his injury, and he gets to play the Minnesota Vikings, who have a problem when it comes to wide receivers. I mean, look, Just look at what Garrett Wilson did. Look at – and Corey Davis. Like these – Corey Davis is a is fine. Like he's a he's a fine NFL player, uh, but the fact that teams are having success against the Minnesota Vikings and Chark is is getting a, a decent enough target share, plus be the big playability that Chark brings. I think that he is an option this I, week. I think the matchup is what puts that over the top for me. DJ right. Chark, Corey Davis, and Darius Slayton. Those three guys are very similar in the sense that I think they're you know they're good games. They're like five for. 90 or some somewhere around there they're they're uh deeper play uh, you know they can have a big play against any team but Corey Davis plays in Buffalo this week and Darius Slayton plays against Philadelphia he might get slay on Slayton right so I would prefer Chark over those two other matchup plays but both Corey Davis and Darius Slayton I think can go out there I mean Darius Slayton's been a top 24 wide receiver in five of the last eight games and I know he had a good game against another difficult matchup. I don't remember what it was off the top of my head. So, Slayton? Yeah. Slayton is uh, top 24 wide receiver in five of eight games. Isaiah Hodgins breaking out for New York, and then you have Richie James with the underneath routes in New York. If you Is that the order you put him in? Are you still Slayton, Hodgins? Would you go Slayton, Hodgins, James? Uh, yes, yeah. of those three, for sure. Yeah, I'll just take the, the talent. Uh, as far as, like, Stashing a guy, I mentioned Corey Davis. I, I'm not really wanting to play him against Buffalo, but the upcoming schedule for the Jets would be Detroit, Jacksonville, Seattle. So that's that's an interesting three game run there for for a guy who's he's back. He was you know two weeks ago he was coming off the injury, didn't play his full snaps, only had three targets. But this past week, back over eighty percent of the snaps, ten targets. Again, I'm not. I don't want to play him against Buffalo, but as long as Mike White is starting against Detroit, 
and the and Jacksonville the next couple of weeks. Corey Davis is a is in flex consideration. And um, we haven't brought up Trent Sherfield's name, but he is he's interesting. Uh, only he had a seventy five yard touchdown, only three targets. But is he has seen any target no, volume? No, no, no target volume. This is solely just a um, if Jalen Waddle okay, yeah, yeah, were yeah. to miss this game, he, I don't think he'll miss it because he kept coming back in the game. But he's clearly banged up. But if Waddle were to miss against the Chargers. Sherfield will probably be involved more than he has been on the season. Demarcus Robinson had eight targets again for Baltimore. They they're going to be from Huntley though, which is fine. I mean, they uh, were last week too. Yeah, they were from Huntley last week, and if you remember the passing volume, you would expect to go up. Huntley still runs the ball, but not as much as Lamar Jackson. Remember last year when Mark Andrews went all Hamburglar? That was with Huntley. That was with him throwing the ball. So. I don't. I, I agree. Demarcus Robinson probably uh, belongs a little bit higher up in this list. Would you? You'd add Jahan Dotson over Jamison Williams. I would yes. because he is. He. I mean, he's playing a lot of snaps. In fact, this last week his snap uh, count went way up. Ninety-one percent. Exactly, and he had been living in the sixties, seventies. Whereas Jamison Williams, I just don't know if he gets really involved this season yeah, at all he's still recovering and he's still a prospect like we haven't seen Jamison Williams it, you you could proclaim like well he was the greatest wide receiver in this draft he had the ACL that's the only reason he wasn't but you have not seen it yet Jahan Dotson has already proven on an NFL field that he can play so I would I would go with him top drop candidates I mean there's an important part of the year to kind of Cut bait, move oh, forward. Goodness, Cortland Sutton, Michael Pittman, Jacoby Myers. Rough. I, I'm not cutting Myers. I'm. I don't think I'm going to cut any of those guys. If those guys were on waivers, I would pick them up. The one that I would cut first would probably be Sutton. Sutton is uh, dealing with a day to day hamstring injury yeah. right now. He That's injured with a bad quarterback, Jerry Judy back. I can't imagine. Like I won't be starting Cortland Sutton this week, and possibly going into the future so he would be the one that i would that i would cut bait first. yeah the hamstring makes it very difficult uh let's take a quick break come back with some running back waiver wire pickups all right i think the fantasy leagues will be fighting to uh welcome james cook into the fold this week james cook saw a Massive increase in usage in Buffalo. I think the consensus might be this is it's his time, right, to make a big difference in this offense. He had 20 touches against uh, New England, 14 on the ground, six for 41 through the air. That's what I'm the most interested in. Is sure. he is more fluid coming out of the backfield and and receiving the football than I think Devin Singletary is. Singletary is competent. Cook is fluid. Goal line seems to be Singletary, and he'll still be used, but we know what this team likes to do at running back when they have the option, which is to share it. And the juice is with James Cook. When when there is a hole that is opened up and you watch, like Singletary in a crowd is much better than James Cook. But if you open up a lane and you send both of those guys through it, James Cook's getting at least eight yards further down the field before he stops his – speedy run um that's not the game for uh Singletary so it's tough though to like I James Cook seems like the number one pickup this week because there's so many question marks with all these guys but can you really confidently even start him can you it's the Jets the Jets have a good defense I think you can flex him I I think he's in flex consideration he's also you're looking further ahead too of uh like if you're picking up James Cook at this point you you're just doing a hail mary no matter no matter what you're doing for your running back position which i have a team out there where it's like got jonathan taylor on by ken walker may not play and it's like it got ravaged i have to go to the waiver wire so james cook is it's not the best play but then miami chicago mm -hmm. like if you get the confidence boost with another snap performance like this another opportunity performance like this and you're going to feel great playing him in those next that, coming matchups that is a really great point if he has a good game against the Jets, he'll be a must-start the following week. Yes. 
He's also had runs of 33, 24, 29, 28. Like if he has a one of those big kind of season defining 50 plus yard touchdown runs, he'll be making headlines and all of a sudden you'll be sitting pretty. Brooks made the comparison. It's like Tony Pollard can do stuff that Zeke can't do. Yeah. Cook can do stuff that um Singletary, the Singletary yeah. can't do. But Bam Knight's also going to get chased. 54% rostered. A lot of people picked him up and started him last week. Running back for the Jets. 15 for 90. Five targets. 55% of snaps. 55! A knight in shining armor. He Could is be. a... Uh, it's a, it's not the best matchup against Buffalo, but they're not the defense that they were at the beginning yeah. of the year. Zonovan Knight is a very good play if Michael Carter is out. Yep. And we just don't know whether or not Michael Carter will be back. It was a low ankle sprain, so the timeline says he could be back. Honestly, I think that there's a chance you, based on what Zonovan Knight did, gives you maybe more confidence to not rush Michael Carter back. Um, if both James Cook and, uh, it, like, if, if I knew that Carter was out and I needed to start this week, I would rather start Zonovan Knight over James Cook for this week. Here's a tough one, though. Would you rather start Cam Akers oh, over man. Zonovan Knight? Cam <laughs> Akers is playing the Raiders. Got 17 attempts. Uh, to me, this decision is tough because John Wolford makes the offense so much better than Bryce Perkins does. If I knew that Akers had Wolford and you're playing the Raiders, is that a better play than Knight, or is it not because Knight has so much more juice? Uh, I it, if if Carter is out, I'll play Knight above Acres. I definitely can see a a trap coming from the Rams. If you look at who has led in snap percentage on a week by week basis, it just changes. Every, it's like, oh, okay, here's clarity. Nope, uh, it's Henderson. It's Acres. It's uh, Kyron. It's it just goes back and forth. Um, and I agree with you completely. Like Cam Acres, if Wolford is starting is is a good enough play to put in your lineup with six bye weeks. But if Perkins is a starter, I, I won't trust Akers. Mike, how do you order Cook, Knight, and Akers? I would go, if I'm sending it right now with the information that we have, it would go Cook, then, oh, man. The Akers-Knight decision is so brutal because I agree that if, if if Michael Carter is out, it would be – Easily Zonovan Knight for me against Buffalo. That that matchup doesn't scare me anymore. Uh, so as of right now, I think I would go Cook, Knight, Acres. I'd roll the dice. Acres potential to have a longer shelf life. He does possibly, yeah. But he's he's it's all about the the game script here for for Cam Acres because Kyron is still the pass catching running back. Uh, like they just you know they they had an okay game here. Uh, against the Raiders. Acres should be okay-ish. The 17 carries, but he got 60 yards. He had two rushing touchdowns, but 60 yards on 17 attempts is not great. Green Bay, Denver, up with that. 72% of snaps. Yeah, he, he was he was absolutely the guy. Zonovan Knight with, like, how do you guys look at the Jets situation of, let's say Michael Carter comes back next week. Is this, are you going to project fully right back to Michael Carter, or does the team turn it into a timeshare with Zonovan Knight, who's had tremendous success because the, the upcoming matchups, talked about it for Car Corey Davis. Carter will get great. all the third down, and Carter will share some of the running work, and then that's what my concern would be for Zonovan Knight is yeah. you, you're at 11 for, you know, 42 with one catch, uh, you know, as a peak. Yeah, and, and you're probably not wanting to start either of those players if Carter is back. Uh, we are, I uh, had a couple other questions at the running back position, specifically Jarek McKinnon, because, you know, eight for 51 on the ground, two for nine and a touchdown through the air. He's out there as much as Pacheco. Like they're both out there 45, 50%, 40%. They're, they're pretty much sharing that backfield. I think they both scored this past week. Yes. So, you know, if Pacheco is out there, everyone would fight for him. Is McKinnon being undervalued? as a spot start, especially on a six-team bye week. Is he the Zay Jones of the running back position, a spot start <laughs> that you can – you know, maybe Zay Jones didn't perform because there weren't enough teams on bye last Ooh. week. He needed, he needed more opportunity. Yeah. Um, Jerick McKinnon is probably being undervalued right now in, in the sense that 
he's available in half of leagues, and he is playing a lot of snaps for the Kansas City Chiefs and been good enough to be a spot start this week specifically against uh, the Denver Broncos in Denver. Does not project to be a great high-scoring affair. Uh, certainly is not going to be a game where Denver hops out to a big lead and you've got to use the pass-catching uh, prowess of McKinnon. So uh, I, I I don't see him as a Zay-level Jones spot start this week, but <laughs> under Zay value. Zay-level Jones? <laughs> Is that what I said? Yeah, you did say Zay Level Jones. Yeah, that's exactly what I meant. <laughs> that is well said, Jason. It doesn't matter the order the words are in. I think there was some study about that. It you was, can just put them in any order. It was a great point. Everyone understands it the same. Yeah, after but after I feel like after those three guys, it's pretty much what do you do with Seattle? Stashes and miracles. That's one of the miracles is Seattle. <laughs> um, Problem is you can't you can't invest right now. Like, but you have to. You right? can put a zero on like Tony. Jones you Jr. could put a zero on Tony Jones Jr. Who but but like Kenneth Walker situation. We heard that Rashad Penny could make it back by the end of the year. They could sign somebody this week. DJ Dallas could be fine, even though he's dealing with an injury. Do you put any kind of claim whatsoever on DJ Dallas or Travis Homer? I, I mean you can go zero. I'm not. If it would I'd go Tony Jones or bust. Man. Which has he – has Tony Jones had snaps at all? Not really. He got in this game, and he also got injured. Oh, yeah, I forgot. He was <laughs> – Seven for 14. I forgot he also got hurt. Yeah, he, he did get in the game. He was the basically the next man up, but he uh, he left that game. That's why they had to go back to the – Yeah, the, DJ Dallas. The, that's right. I'd, I'd, bid, I'd bid a dollar. Okay. I'd bid a dollar on Tony Jones. Okay. Gets Maybe. Carolina. That's pretty good. Jason, yeah. would you bid a dollar on every – name that he has <laughs> oh Tony, man Tony that, then Brooks, i would have to, I, he Jones. probably doesn't have enough fab yeah i, I think I'm, I'm capped at 28 dollars right now so i don't think i can uh do a dollar per name here for tony tony brooks james jones robinson jr oh, um, it's robinson now yeah so he is someone you could take a shot on because obviously if yeah if those guys are all if they're all out and you're playing carolina then t like he caught two passes he had seven carries and it was in a small amount of the game. There will be a running back this week against Carolina who is a decent fantasy option. At this point in time, we don't know who that is. It's really early on Tuesday morning. Before your waiver wire goes through, it is possible there is new information out coming out from beat reporters in Seattle. You just got to pay attention to it because right now it's impossible to know. Any other names that you want to mention? Uh, it, just, it is the time you need to have your insurance running backs or – be blocking other people. So if Madison, Alexander Madison's on your waiver wire, he he is an absolute must roster to me. I th I think that Jordan Mason, as the next man up for San Francisco, has moved to me as a, you. He needs to be rostered at mm -hmm. least by somebody in your league, uh, because w with with Brock Purdy, is that that's his name, right? Did I, did I get no, his first you, name? You nailed it. Uh, it, it. With with that situation of the quarterback, they are. Uh, I know he threw a ton, but I'm guessing they're going to want to lean on the running backs a little bit more. With so but that's more work for Christian McCaffrey, more opportunity, more to opportunity be to get injured. And I'm saying that as Christian McCaffrey is, I need him to get me into the playoffs. But you got to be prepared for situations. Uh, Joshua Kelly for the Chargers. It looks like he took back the job as the the primary backup over Isaiah Spiller. And then I think the the last one who's a higher upside to me would be Kenneth Gainwell for the Philadelphia Eagles. That's a projection. Should Miles Sanders miss time, I think Gainwell's the one that would get the big bump. Yeah, the last name I'll throw to your list in addition is Matt Breida. He's my usual sure. Sunday morning IR pickup. Like when I get a guy yeah, who yeah, I can yeah. move to IR and I'm looking for someone on waivers, Breida's usually there. He's easy to drop right after the week, but uh, if Saquon went down, there's really no depth chart Agreed. behind Breida. Are you willing to cut? Like there's some names, Cook, Knight, Akers, McKinnon, are you willing to cut Gus Edwards? Yes. Antonio Gibson? No. No. James Robinson? Yeah, yes. absolutely. All right, let's dive into some tight ends. We're welcoming into the fold. I think Greg Dulcich. Oh yeah, he's the a D will be back. Yeah, at it's, the top of the list, especially with Cortland Sutton. If if Sutton's missing or is hampered by the hamstring, I I think that's why you saw Greg Dulcich pull in six for eighty five this past week. Six for eighty five, deep targets. He's running good routes for a rookie tight end, and they're playing against Kansas City this yeah. week so uh, you know Kansas City's defense isn't 
in and of itself, it's bad, but their offense is so good that their defense ends up giving up points through the game. Now, you got a Russell Wilson clear problem here. Uh, yes. But I, I, I do think for all the tight ends that are gone, I mean, even like Cole Komet is on bye, and you've got injuries elsewhere, Greg Dulcich is probably one of the more important pickups this week. Nathaniel Hackett said they're using him in a wide receiver role. So you you want that. You want the non-blocking wide receiver tight end. Uh, Komet's on by. Evan Ingram, seven targets, five for 30 and a touchdown. You are always playing with a fire with Evan Ingram. Mm -hmm. If you the, catch the right game, you're happy. I mean, he's athletic enough to be involved around the goal line. The floor is Uno. Uh, one point is a solid outing, uh, realistically from Evan Ingram, but this week I, w I would agree. And, and honestly, for me, Hunter Henry is, oh, man. An, oh, Arizona, baby. That's all it is. <laughs> if you're looking for a one week start, we've done it all year long to great success. You grab whatever tight end, whether they've been great or not, they're going to have a better game than usual against Arizona than their normal game. Hunter Henry had a touchdown a couple weeks ago coming off a bye. So he's a spot start as well. Two catches last week for Hunter Henry. I wanted to take a quick glance at Mr. Johnny Smith, who also had two catches. It was, sure. <laughs> it was very disappointing for Henry last week. Whoever runs laterally behind the line of scrimmage, which yep. could be Johnny that, that Smith. That could be Johnny Smith. You're right. Uh, Noah Fant, five targets, four for 42, and a touchdown last week. Uh, he's, he's safer than some because I think two to three catches is his floor uh, with Seattle. Also, this last week, I I, I was number um, two tight end. I was not. Oh, on the week, yes, yes, um, because four for forty two and a touchdown was that good. Yeah. Yes, uh, the, the that fact must that mean Seattle Taysom Hill was number one. Uh, I don't think so. Who was number one on the week at tight end? If four for forty two and a touchdown, am I forgetting somebody from last night? Kate Otten. One sec. Yeah, we'll we'll get that. Uh, but the Seattle passing game is worth noting. Because the running backs are so depleted there. We've obviously talked about it. That This is what happened last week. I think Kenneth Walker would have had a great game and maybe DK Metcalf lock it not quite as good. But they just had to throw the ball every play. So no fan is definitely a good pickup against Carolina. I did get confirmation that um, it was Taysom Hill. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Oh, that's fine. A dance party for people's benches. He did get hit in the face, by the way. It yes. was eh, sort of. He should have caught it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Stay on brand, Mike. Yeah. I like it. Pro, con pro concussion, Mike Wright. Oh, not pro concussion. Pro, uh, what? How, what's he being paid? A lot of money. There you go. You get paid a lot of money, you better catch that ball. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just like satchels and satchels of hatred that you carry behind. Let it go, Mike. Oh, let right. it all go. Yeah, I'm just like Taysom, I I will let it no, go. All right. The Raiders <laughs> defense this week plays the Rams. Um, yeah, I'm in. I'm I'm into it. Yeah, I I am. I, I'm less into it if it's Wolford. Genuinely. Okay. okay. Um, the Chiefs they play Denver. I'm very into that. Sure. Seattle plays Carolina. I'm into that. Yes, definitely. Balt Baltimore is one of my favorites by far of the week against really? Pittsburgh. Yeah, I like them more than Pitt. I think you could play both. Really? I like Pittsburgh more than Baltimore. Baltimore's just been a really, really solid performer for fantasy, and I I just know the kind of trouble they're going to give Kenny Pickett, and so I feel a little more cozy there. I think Tyler Huntley can – manufacture slightly more offense against Pittsburgh. But I think they're both good starts. Yeah, both are good starts. Pittsburgh's going to be more widely available. Baltimore's probably uh, rostered in your league. Dar the over-under's 37 right now it's on, gross. That, on that Baltimore. That game's going to be disgusting. Hmm. They're just, you know, Pittsburgh can't won't run. They won't be able to run against Baltimore. So it's going to be Kenny Pickett chucking it. And I we'll see what happens. Um, just get loose. Yeah, he he will try. I'm I, I I want Pickett to succeed. I've said this a few times this year because I think he's got the mental makeup that like if you could take his mental makeup and then just throw him into like Trevor Lawrence's body, I think you'd have a really good quarterback. But every week, like of all the quarterbacks I watch, Kenny Pickett misses a lot of throws. Yeah. Like he's in the top five every week of throws that I'm like, dang man, like you had that guy or that ball was placed wrong or you made that read wrong, like. 
He's gotten better over the it's last like he's a rookie. month, but he's still right. yeah, he 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 looks like a rookie out there and just the actual throw is often just too bad. I mean, that's that's the only way you can put it. It's like the read isn't wrong. I can see you didn't do Tro anything wrong. It's just terrible throw. I can hear Troy Aikman making that analysis there. <laughs> the throw is bad. Yeah. Bad also, uh, for defensive pickups, unfortunately, uh, the opponent of the Houston Texans is not going to be on your waiver wire. That's usually our go-to. Uh, yes. The Dallas Cowboys, if you have them, enjoy. Are you paying up in DFS? I have I have built I've built at least ten lineups. You're, are, my my base. You is, oh, they're in my lineup right now. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I paid up. Yeah, I I I I did, and uh, I've moved away from it because it's expensive. Right, yeah, it's, it it's, costs you, but it's hard to put them in, and they might not be there come Friday. But uh, as of right now, they are in my. That's lineup. fun. Yeah, it, it's um. I had to, to to budget my wide receivers so I could afford this defense. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> All right, that was Welcome to the Fold, presented by our friends at Samsung, the Samsung Galaxy. You can unfold edge-to-edge -edge screen. Uh, is that way you can see all of the turnovers by Houston? Uh, of the Galaxy Z Fold 4. The, it is, the screen is large enough for Mo the Houston Texans turnovers. That's, that's how right. big the screen is. Uh, you can maximize your game viewing experience with that Galaxy Z Fold 4, and you can visit Samsung.com to learn more. Full stream ahead. Well, Jason, you have my favorite stream of the week. You got in here nice and early. Mm -hmm. uh, but why don't you kick it off, and then I will take the quarterback on the other side. Sure. Uh, the Minnesota-Detroit game, I'll go with Jared Goff. Goff is at home in seven games. He has 17 passing touchdowns at home. And the Vikings have allowed the most passing yards, the highest yards per attempt, 7.6 in the NFL. They're... Pretty good against the run, not great against the passing game. We saw what Mike White just put up, 369 yards against them. Since week five, they ranked 29th in fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. It's a great matchup. Uh, I expect uh, both these quarterbacks to be good. Yeah, and I'm taking... Oh! oh Jared Gerf <laughs> introducing... That's not even introducing. That's like I'm walking <laughs> off the stage. His, Jason had stopped talking about him. I was trying not to interrupt. I was waiting oh, for a break. Just Perfectly do the drops whenever it. you want yeah. during the whole show. <laughs> Hit something else. Thank you. Jared Gurf. 63 points. That is the average for Detroit home game. 63 combined points. Wow. And it's going to continue. Captain Kirk is my stream of the week at quarterback. Detroit's going to give it up. Minnesota's going to give it up. I want players throughout this entire game. And uh, I want the one with Justin Jefferson. Sure. So I'm going to go with Captain Kirk. What's, what's the over-under on that game right now? 53. Yeah. Not bad. Delightful. Not bad. Uh, and I'm going to go with – I'm going to send in the car. Derek Carr. You can hit that drop. Yeah. Well, wait till he's done talking, right? Yeah. Send in the car. Send in the car. Uh, he's playing the Los Angeles Rams. He's actually been top 12 in four of his last five starts. The Rams, it's not going well for this team. Uh, look, they've allowed three top 12 weeks in a row. One of those was Andy Dalton. I will say Derek Carr currently, I'm looking at our site, sitting at quarterback 13, so he's got to be careful to manage the equilibrium of ending the season at QB 13. So should he have a good performance here, you better watch out because it's going to balance. Are you saying that because he was the quarterback 13 last year? Yes. And it, because he was the quarterback 13 the year prior to that? Yes. And currently the quarterback. Yeah, I, yes. I, I expect him to be yes. the quarterback. So I, he's going to be good this week, but then we might have to bail out. Yeah. Sometimes I think he should throw the ball to Devontae Adams on every play. Sometimes he thinks that, too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he's been doing that, and which has been a great success. <laughs> I mean, he just. Check this out. <laughs> just throw it up towards the side of the field he's on and let him go make a play. Just the. Uh, th there was a highlight of just another nasty route from Devonte Adams this past week, and the and the Chargers defender just just fell over. Like he hit him with an and one move, and, and the defender goes, "Yeah!" It's just that's that's how he's wide open because he makes people fall over because he's so nasty. They have uh, they've won three straight games against Denver, Seattle, and the Chargers. They have the Rams. Patriots Pittsburgh the next three weeks 
Yeah, play him against the Rams. It's not impossible that the they go on a nice five six game run here. Could be, uh, Pats, Steelers, 49ers, Chiefs. Yeah, I, I didn't talk about the 49er part on <laughs> purpose. The, the Chiefs. <laughs> well, that's that's where he will plummet back to QB thirteen. Yeah, I see that possible. Uh, top twelve in four of his last five starts. Yep. So going with Derek Carr and his good friend Devontae Adams. Uh, people want to know if they should drop Tom Brady. Oh my goodness. And now, Brooks, you have been you traded for Brady in Dynasty. He had no choice. So you've got Brady and Russell Wilson. How are you feeling? Yeah, see, he had no uh, choice. I a, I'm feeling great. That was a <laughs> huge upgrade for what I was dealing with. Do you have anybody else on that roster at quarterback? I had Stafford. Oh, I have Ty, uh, Tyler Huntley. Had him on the bench. And, oh, yeah, you Andy know who, Dalton. You know who else you have on your bench, Brooks? Who's that? You got another quarterback on your bench, I noticed. Who's that? Who's that? I'm blanking. Yeah, you're blanking. All right. Um. Are you blanking? Uh, are you able no, to I'm not say blanking. I, I'm just pausing for a dramatic effect. It's Case Keenum. You know oh, you, yeah. Oh, you know you Josh, have, I've been holding him once that injury Yeah, came thanks, up. brother. Thanks. Because I uh, I was looking for him to back up my Josh Allen. And, of uh, course, my arch nemesis <laughs> has Case Keenum for no good reason. Because Brooks has every backup player. How does he have such a big roster? Because, because of the infinite wealth, he has 100 roster spots. That'd yeah. be a funny um, for every backup. That'd be a funny league if you could gamify a league where, like, it reminds me of like massive multiplayer online games where you could pay for a bigger bag. Like if you could, <laughs> oh, yeah. you, like, and it goes into the pot at but the end of the pay year. Pay to win? Well, it's not pay to win. You just pay for an extra bench spot. It's like fifty bucks into the pot for one extra bench spot. It's like microtransactions, it. Mike. I think it's an economic. I think that it would, if it's fifty dollars, you're going to have. Everybody having one extra bench spot. What if it was, well, it was a lot more, though? It's 250 bucks. Oh, man. Yeah. For no, a bench spot? That's good. I, I used to play in a league where all transactions cost money, but like a trade was 20 Back in the 1940s? Or? <laughs> a, yes, in the 40s. <laughs> uh, a trade was $20. You sent it by telegram. So it went to the league. 20 bucks went to the league uh, yeah. if a trade was made, 10 from each team. But you could, you could take that on and say, hey, you put this trade together, I'll pay the full 20. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's it was oh, fun. Oh yeah, corruption certainly won't slide into that league. Al calls them <laughs> Al calls them Ticketmaster leagues. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, I you know dropping Tom Brady, sure. Uh, he's against San Francisco a, this week. I'll, I'll, let me put it this way. I w yeah that that's and followed up by the Bengals. Look, you need to start looking at players like Jared Goff as potential quarterbacks into the fantasy playoffs. In my opinion. Sure. Uh, I think that, uh, and it, depending on your waiver wire, like Jared Goff's not available for everybody. He's, I don't know where he's, like 60% or something. Uh, but legit, Brock Purdy, Mike White, the schedules for those two quarterbacks after this week are, they're going to be in our streamers for sure. One of the, one, At least one of those guys. Yeah, and if you're, obviously, if you're in a two-quarterback league, Brock Purdy is going to be oh, yeah. hot on the waiver wire. And it th this is the time of year like empty your bag. Right. You know, save a couple a couple bucks for the playoff run if you're there. If you're not there, do whatever you got to do to get there and don't be shy on, you know, it's like, "Oh, this player Zonovan Knight, you know, you'd usually bid 10, 15, bid 80 if that's all you if you've got 100 left of your budget, just go get your guys." All right, that is going to do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Ride or die, Thursday night preview, mailbag, and a special announcement tomorrow. Oh. Need the Foot Clan to step up. We'll talk to you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.